What's up guys, hope everyone is doing well. In today's video I'm going to be going over some updates in the short term, heading out to the macro view of things for Bitcoin, and then towards the end I'm going to touch on the SPX and its 27 plus year long trend that I've been talking about for quite some time at this point, and what I think that's culminating in, and uh, what I think that this uh, recent move of the general and stock indices could likely end up playing out here in the next coming a uh, few months or so but to go ahead and get it started here on this two-day chart um, as I posted on my community tab recently a daily and a 12-hour chart uh, just to quickly reiterate it without showing it uh, according to the, the Gaussian channel on the 12-hour chart we have uh, solidified movement back above our median line of the Gaussian channel on the daily we have come up to it and we are basically butting our heads uh, in terms of the candle or butting the very top of the candle body itself along it what I find interesting here about this two-day chart, um, without zooming in just yet, if we just look down here in the right uh, at our current price action, we basically came right down to the median line, and so far we are seeing a bounce, a pretty nice bounce off of it. And actually, I'll just go ahead and zoom in because I suppose that would be better anyways. But we've been in this descending, this short-term descending channel since basically uh, real two. I guess so. I suppose around. April 13th, um, it even goes back to around the 22nd of March. Um, but I think it's very good that we've seen this bounce overall. So far as I've been saying, I think worst case scenario or best worst case scenario, we come down to around 23.5 to 22.5 thousand. That lines up with the overall, the golden pocket range, about halfway into the golden pocket range of our retracement taken from the top to the bottom. Uh, Going from the relative local high we set at $31,000 approximately all the way down to the absolute low, which I believe is the bear market low at specifically $14,000 or $15,495. And again, is what would line up if we look at this as a bullish megaphone pattern right here. Let's say this has been a very long drawn out retest according to this pattern. We would dip down basically if we hit that price range I mentioned. Basically, we would see so retest all the way down to quite literally essentially the very middle of the consolidation of the megaphone aspect of that pattern as i said um on this two-day chart specifically uh, twenty-eight thousand in general i think is very important to be looking out for here in the uh coming i would say best i guess they've about medium term in the next month or two or so uh twenty-eight thousand, uh, according to the descending channel we've been in Specifically, it's more around 27,000, 27.5 thousand, excuse me, but obviously 28,000. Basically, it would be a little bit more important there. The upper bound of the Gaussian channel here on this two-day chart sits at 29.3 thousand specifically. But again, just to reiterate, we start to break 28,000 with strength and likely we will head towards 30, 31,000. Once we start to break that, that's also going to be obviously... Um, great to see as well i mean i feel like that's kind of obvious some of the things i say in these videos i feel almost stupid for even saying it because like i mean watch it and that kind of just be common sense anyways but um, besides that um it, as i said for each of these little price targets we see right here of these little uh these turquoise arrows each of these line up with different price patterns people and my well myself specifically one of them i believe it's the lower one at forty one thousand. that's what lines up with the bullish megaphone that i pointed out although like i've been saying a lot of people are pointing out how um right here this little with well, this according to this descending channel we could look at this as a bull flag as i highlighted which that would take us up to forty three thousand, i believe but in general that bullish megaphone that i pointed out i look at it as a bullish uh, bullish flag of a megaphone, uh, megaphone variety. So basically the bullish uh, flags are generally just pointing to forty dollars to $45,000 approximately, which both of those are within the golden pocket range according to the 1.382 to the 1.618 of the same retracement that I mentioned earlier. 
and the $52,000 one approximately is according to people that have been pointing on a cup and handle potential. Maybe this is a cup and handle like this as I highlighted, which would um, take us basically all the way up to uh, just basically 50 to 55,000 to give a more of kind of like a broad range because I like to give ranges rather than specific price targets, um, which basically pushes is it pushes out of the pivot uh, of the upper golden pocket, but basically pushes it all the way up to the highest extension of the 1.786 according to that same retracement. But what's very important and I think key of all three of these price targets, whether the low 40s or the uh, whether the low to mid 40s or the low to mid 50 thousand dollar range is hit, we would uh, break out of this descending, this white dotted uh, descending channel, if you want to call it, with the lower bound set from the $64,000 high to the rejection of 48000 And then I just duplicated, I cloned that line with the same slope and just put it along 69000 So I would say, according to this daily chart, uh, if we do indeed, let's say we've already met our local low um, and we get the bounce above 28, obviously 30000 we continue to push with strength. If we start to head to 40, 45000 uh, and then especially obviously fifty to 55000 I would... Uh, definitely goes far to say that we are definitely probably within uh, the actual bull market, the upcoming bull market that I've been talking about recently. I mean, again, just to say it, uh, basically it's a 14, roughly 14, 60 month resistance going all the way back to 69,000, connecting it to 48,000. We can see going down here to February 12th, roughly of this year, and then March 12th. Um, so about a month apart or so we set those same retests those two this basically i guess, suppose you could look at it as a double bottom i suppose if you wanted to along this 14 60 month resistance it's what formed the actual bullish megaphone pattern itself which again as i said in the past i find that also very just elegant to see that this megaphone pattern used the 16 14 60 month resistance as its uh support line uh, for the megaphone aspect of that pattern um, but if we take a look down here at the RSI, haven't used this RSI before, this is an RSI paired with Bollinger Bands. Um, we can see here that, if we zoom in, if I zoom in here real quickly, we point out so the final retest right here, going back to March 10th, 12th this year right here, and then our current low that we set, wicking all the way down to 24.7 thousand. Take a look here down at this uh, RSI. We can see that the RSI has essentially completely reset itself, yet the price is basically six thousand, six seven thousand dollars apart. Um, I think that's a very good sign to see as well. The fact that we are, like I said, seven basically six seven thousand dollars higher than we were, uh, yet the RSI has reset itself down to the same levels. We can see that the Bollinger Bands itself right here are essentially the tightest they've been rather than going back to the 19th of April, which, which is when we began the downtrend in this uh, descending channel. It's when we got the uh, bearish divergence that started this downtrend, this minor downtrend we've been seeing. Um, but I think, uh, and also what I do find interesting is as well as if we, I can see down here that the tightening up of these Bollinger Bands is happening within the lower half of this uh, range that I have on here, these dotted trend lines. And it's the same area where we can see the Bollinger Bands tightened up back here, back in January of last year, or my bad, December of last year, January of this year, when we started to see the upwards movement from basically 16.5 thousand, uh, which then led us into the breaking of the 16, 14 month resistance, uh, and ultimately having the uh, retest of that. And also, final thing I want to point out on this chart is the basically the crux of the uh, sideways trading that we got as i'm highlighting here from january all the way to basically april of so january 2021 to april 2022 a little over a year the crux of that lines up with 40 to 45 thousand so i think that is uh probably more likely where it's going to go i didn't mention it uh, that cup and handle pattern is kind of iffy in my personal opinion i feel like the cup aspect of it. it just looks kind of ugly which i mean that doesn't really mean anything i mean it could very likely obviously go to 50 55,000. i don't know anything at the end of the day what's going to happen but there's also been a lot of people pointing out like a head and shoulders whether or not you want to consider all of this right here the left shoulder or an inverse head and shoulders my bad technically 
this being the head down here and this being the right shoulder or perhaps just this being the left shoulder we have the head and then we have the right shoulder right here um seeing people point that out as well uh, i also think that's kind of a stretch i think it's just really ugly i think the left shoulder kind of makes it not really applicable i mean perhaps even the right shoulder and i think that the Overall, I mean, personally, if I just kind of give my opinion here, my bias, I suppose, I think that the only thing that's really super applicable is the uh, megaphone, this megaphone pattern that I pointed out right here, this bull flag of a megaphone variety that we have formed after breaking a 1460-month resistance, and now what we're seeing here is a very long, drawn-out retest of that pattern until we finally, uh, eventually, you know, hopefully, obviously, given the bullish bias of that pattern break towards the upside here with respect to the uh, 20,000, 30,000 that I mentioned earlier. Um, but we do want to see the RSI right here as it's tightening up break above the threshold, the median around uh, 53 on the RSI. That right there will be the first thing to see that will likely basically just completely coincide with the breaking of uh, 27.5 to uh, 28,000. So, I mean, like I said, that'll probably essentially happen at the same time. Uh, also on the, this chart, the lower bound of the Gaussian channel lies at 22.7 thousand. So if we were to come down and test what I said at the lowest according to, which would be literally the very middle of this bullish megaphone pattern and right smack in the middle of the 0.5 of the golden pocket, again, uh, that would line up with the bottom of the Gaussian channel. Um, and if we start to lose that, then that could start to scream, perhaps at the bear market's not over, which definitely isn't a good thing. But um, as I've been saying recently, as long as we don't lose 20,000, I don't really think there's anything to worry about, which leads me into this weekly chart. Um, so it, let's say we do head down to 20,000. This macro ascending channel that we can see on here that encompasses the very tail end of the previous cycle of the phase two we had, which spans from July of 2017 to the $20,000 approximately high we set in December of 2017. And then phase one of the cycle three that we're on began uh, at the same high all the way up to our current time. So if we come down and we test 20,000, I don't think, I mean, even we could even see wicks down to basically 18,7 or 19,000. And I still personally don't think that that would completely destroy the fact that we would head into a bull market. I think it would... Assuming that there would still be a bull market when we hit this price list and we're actually going to bounce there, then that would only uh, push the all-time high, in my opinion, more towards the end of next year, perhaps bleeding into 2025, rather than, as it's projected currently on here with the right fractal pattern, more towards the first half of next year. Um, I mean, like I said in the last video, BlackRock, Fidelity, Bank of America, and I'm sure many other big players, Wells, uh, market makers, whatever you want to call them, however you want to label them, that have been buying a lot of Bitcoin, crypto, just in general, during quarter one of this year, along with the FUD, uh, in terms of the SEC suing Binance, Kraken, Coinbase, etc. recently has been getting. I feel like, we're, as I said, as I labeled the last video, we're seeing a perfect storm of news and technical analysis lining up very, very elegantly. The fact that we're seeing uh, the technical analysis, I mean, we've been in a bear market for pushing two years, depending upon whether or not you take it from, if you take it from 64,000, it's basically been two years. I think it's actually been a little over, a little over two years. But if you take it from sixty nine thousand, it's been about uh, about a, a little over a year and a half. Which the uh, the on chain, uh, on chain metrics of Bitcoin uh, clarify that sixty four thousand was more of in terms of a general uh, an actual you know intrinsic structure of Bitcoin's price harmonics over time. Sixty four thousand was the technical top of the recent bull market that we did see. Um, so that's typically why I would use that one. And the fact that we've been in a bear market for basically two years, maybe even a little over two years. Um, and I think that's actually the longest we've seen one. I mean, if I go back to 14 to 15, I mean, this was from the highest wick to when we broke out of it, it was 665 days. Uh, so, I mean, that was also uh, in general just approximately two years as well, which... Uh, like I've been saying, the if you look at the structure, and I'm not really going to go over it too much in this video, if you look at the structure of our most recent bear market and then you compare it to the structure of the bear market we saw back here in 14 to 15, they are essentially, harmonic-wise, identical. Um, if any of you are new to the content or you're not already familiar with it, and every time I say phase or cycle or this or that, uh, the first two cards at the beginning of this video have me more elaborately uh, in-depth going over what I mean by that and what I personally see. 
in Bitcoin's uh, price movement going all the way back to when it came out until now. Um, but like I said, I mean, we could, let's say we get a drop down to like 20,000. We see some wicks like as low as 18.7. That could, I mean, maybe we see some sort of another black swan event. I don't think that would really be accurate to call it that because it would only, from where we are now down to approximately 20,000 is basically only 30 to 35%. I don't think that's enough to really call it one. Although I did call the FTX crash of black swan and that literally went down 27%. So I'm actually going to go back on that because that just came to my mind. Like, let's say, uh, I don't know, like maybe the Russia Ukraine stuff goes like more berserk in it already has been or how then it started or maybe some other new war begins or i don't know anything it's a black swan no one that like you can't predict it technically you know um that's a whole rabbit hole that i don't want to get down or go down right now like i did in the past but i mean we could totally see something crazy happen soon um and just tank price uh but ultimately like i said i mean if, if Bitcoin were to go down to 20,000, seeing those wicks I mentioned, I don't think that completely screws up the fact that we have been seeing the build up into a bull market. Um, in fact, actually, because I'm just now seeing it as I'm looking at the chart, let's say we, I take my drawing tool, let's say that we come down and we, you know, I'm going to change the color of that. Let's say we come down and move something like that. Looking at it, this would essentially, in my opinion, that looks terrible just extend out this bullish megaphone pattern that I mentioned on the lower time frames and would uh, basically move that lower time frame pattern into the higher time frame. I actually I've mentioned this whole uh, concept in previous videos where a lot of the times you'll start to see patterns forming on the daily really not going lower than the daily kind of it, it's not really uh, trustworthy as it generally is, you know, anything daily and higher is typically more viable. But when you start to see price patterns form on the daily uh, up to the like weekly, um, typically the price patterns you'll see form on the daily will start to trickle into the higher time frames. Like you'll see a bull flag start to print in the daily and then let's say another number of weeks or a couple months go by. Then you're starting to see that same bull flag on the weekly chart or the monthly chart. Um, I've seen that happen uh, a few times throughout my years of, you know, just analyzing and looking at charts, just, I mean, really for fun, because uh, I just find it, honestly, it's enjoyable, kind of just uh, pleasing to find trends and whatnot. But to point out what I wanted to point out for this chart before I go to the RSI with the Bollinger Bands, the upper bound of the Gaussian channel sits at 30,000 here. Again, it's basically the final mark, final, final line in the sand, more short term, medium term here. Um, the median of the Gaussian channel sits at 20, 23,000, nearly essentially on the dot. So again, could completely come down to that. And then, like I said, 20,000. And then right now, currently, the lower bound of the Gaussian channel sits literally at the absolute low. It's not really important to point out, but I did just want to say that uh, if we take a look back here at the leftmost the uh this proper abcd triangle pattern we see formed from the high of 2017 to the low of 2018 to the intermediate high of 2019 during june and to the march crash low the massive crazy wick that we set during the whole covid pandemic and whatnot uh, what i find insanely interesting about this is that the apex right here like quite literally precisely lines up with the candle that we made the what i personally believe is the absolute bear market low uh, on the week of the 21st of november which i just again like i said this is a, this is an actual this is a proper triangle pattern i mean this is this is this pattern that you use right here and you can draw a triangle pattern with it and it, like it has the actual um i can find it i think it's this this yeah it's this pattern right here that you can just use on trading view like it's a legitimate proper triangle it's borderline i mean it's not symmetrical but i mean it's a very nice looking triangle nonetheless and it basically i mean had you had confidence in that literally predicted the bear market low down to the month even down nearly to like at least around the three days surrounding the day that it happened we can clearly see that we had this very very nice retest right here in our black bubble um, again to draw a comparison to the two black bubbles right here that i have on the chart this is basically where i believe we are at Comparing it back to previous history, I believe we'll get this as the fractal pattern denotes. Assuming we don't get any more significant downside, as I mentioned, the median of this ascending channel 
sits at $64,000. So again, that's just pointing out further emphasis on the fact that once we start to obviously, and this is just common sense, if you, I mean, if you're not new to trading or whatever, once we break 64 to 69,000, then that, that is like literally the final bullet point that we need to check off the list to say that, oh yes, there is a bull market here. Uh, and they continue to actually go higher. Um, although according to what I am projecting, what I've been saying, I think it's likely that we're basically just going to essentially shoot straight through it. Now, if you go down to like super lower time frames, maybe daily, but definitely lower, we'll likely sit there stagnant, sideways, consolidating for a little bit. But overall, I, I literally, assuming I'm correct, obviously, and again, I have no idea what's going to happen, but... If I am at least, if correct, just at least approximately, I mean, I think basically if we have already met our local low, we are essentially going straight up from here. Uh, the upper bound, the uh, what's been resistance in this ascending channel, also again further validates basically 180,000 up to as high as 230,000. Uh, if we were to see 230, even up to 235,000, that would basically, we would see wicking, just minor wicking outside of this upper bound, this uh, resistance. Um, but like I said, I mean, basically 100, more around 190,000 to basically 220,000 is where the actual, uh, the this upper bound, this range, this, uh, has been resistance range. That's actually the price range or the price uh, targets that it encompasses. And just to, I want to go over this as well because I haven't gone over it in a while. Again, assuming here that I'm correct, um, at least approximately, we have this bull market. Basically, it'll be a, a repetition of the March crash to 64,000, given the whole phase cycle theory and whatnot that I mentioned earlier. We get rejected from that range that I mentioned, 200, it's generally 190,000, 230,000. Um, we come down and then. The median is saying basically $100,000 approximately, give or take like $5,000. It's going to be very important, as you can clearly see on here. That's where we would have some stagnation right here in the upcoming bull market. That's where we would find support right here after we get rejected from the all-time high. And then this would then, uh, at the third time, hitting that horizontal, what would be this horizontal line basically going straight through um, the hundred thousand dollar area once we would lose that uh we would then enter the second half or uh, i guess suppose if you want to call it the majority brunt of the bear market that is basically it would essentially just be a similar situation when we go back to right here during the previous um bear market from around june may of 18 to october of 18 when we cross the halfway point of the gaussian channel likely that would also be basically happening right here and around Sometime during 2025, perhaps, we would par uh, get entrenched below the median of the Gaussian channel. I mean, if we go all the way back to right here and again. So what I just got done going over that bear market, this is what lines up with 2013 to 2014, 2015, because that would be phase, what well, after this next upcoming bull market, we would enter, we would exit phase one, and we would enter phase two of the current cycle three that we're in. And the uh, that rejection of what I was saying was 100,000 would line up with this area, this uh, this area right here, similar to September of 2014 to November of 2014. Um, overall, the price harmonics is basically a massive ABC to the bottom, forming a double bottom within the bottom range, um, with the variation of an M in between, as I've pointed out this channel many times. Again, just I just want to point it out and show it the bear market we've seen recently copied that price harmonic and having this massive abc to the downside forming a double bottom of an m variation uh, creating that bottom range and then we're going to break out obviously best case scenario here towards an upcoming bull market um, and then also very important to note is that the uh obviously we, you can see clearly here that we are don't for the uh, first two bottoms of this sideways range, we would set right here, which would encompass that M variation of a W double bottom. We would only hit the, we would finally hit the uh, ascending support of this macro channel we're in, ascending channel of around, and according to how it's put on on here, some uh, more towards the second half of 2026. In general, as I believe I've said in the past, I do believe that the upcoming bear market will basically go sideways during 2025 2026 
um, perhaps even bleeding into the very beginning of 2027. But I do think that it is possible, given the whole lengthening of the cycles um, and whatnot throughout Bitcoin's progression, that the bottom range could definitely last, I mean, over a year, which is, I mean, according to how it is specifically laid on here, it would last from around August of 2025 to October of 2026. So we're talking about, I mean, a year, four months, three months or so overall. So, I mean, that's very brutal. That's basically been the nearly the length of a typical overall bear market, yet uh, this one's going to, the just the sideways stagnation of it's going to last over a year. I mean, assuming, obviously, again, that this is correct. And this would, in general, just be counting the entire bear market once we get rejected at around 215 25,000 approximately would be the longest, the worst, most drawn out um, bear market we've ever seen. And then also just to point this out, I mean, we're basically, in my opinion, seeing uh, within this ascending channel, this ascending structure, broadly we're just seeing impulse waves. And I don't mean to say that in the literal technical sense of what the Elliott waves rules are, but just broad general impulse waves. I mean, if we start from the B of this triangle, we had an impulse here, had a drawback, then we had a massive impulse here, we had a drawback, and then we're going to see another massive impulse right here. I mean, this is, would be a one, a two, a three, a four, and then a five all the way up here. I mean, that would be considered a five wave uh, impulse wave, similar to an Elliott wave. Um, and the uh, the third wave being the bullish, which typically the third wave is the most bullish. And then sometimes the fifth wave can be even more bullish or equally as bullish. That one specifically had the third and the fifth wave being equally bullish. Um, I mean, there's obviously different variations when it comes to those impulse waves. And I mean, really, it's going to be for thinking about it. And I feel like if you're going to be reasonable, uh, I feel like it's kind of unfair to put the per uh, to box in the pattern and saying that the third wave always has, if I remember correctly, always has to be the most bullish. I think that's just kind of stupid. I mean, it's the market. At the end of the day, it's spontaneous. It's sporadic. Um, I think, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with, like, for example, something looking like this. Like, let's say wave one is massive. This is wave three right here. And then this is wave five, where it basically decayed. Wave one was the biggest. Wave three was a little bit smaller. And then wave five was the smallest one out of them all. I mean, this basically kind of just looks like an ascending... Uh, ascending wedge or ascending triangle pattern nearly. I mean, you could definitely draw one like that uh, at the end of the day. Um, but here for the RSI, I just wanted to point this out once more. It's a little bit more detailed as I've shown it in the past, but there's been, if we take a look here at this weekly RSI, this macro time frame, each of these little orange bubbles you see down here on the RSI, these are each and every single time going all the way back Looking at the entire history of Bitcoin, I need to zoom out a little bit more. Looking at it, you can see, again, like I said, each of, the, each of these times, we're on our fifth one. If we just look at the previous four, so the first one being August of 2012, second one being November 2015, third one being August of 2020, and then the fourth one being of November 2021. Three out of four of these have been bullish. So it's these three right here that I highlighted uh, with that vertical line. And then this fifth, or my bad, this fourth one right here, the last one I displaced was bearish. So, I mean, we're looking at a three to four ratio here. So, I mean, we got a 75% chance that this fifth one right here that I circled, which lines up right here where we are now, that this one right here, I have a 75% chance that this is bullish and a 25% chance that this is bearish. This in general lines and also another way to in my opinion uh, validate the fact that it's i think i mean you could push it up to i mean 95 99.9999% the fact that it's going to be bullish is that we have like each of these previous ones you can see this is just shortly after coming up from the over most oversold territory right here on our on the R side we can see if we go back to 2011 it was shortly after we came up from being highly oversold below this lowermost bound at around 33. Same thing happened right here at the second bullish one in 2015. And then we had right here for the March crash, we went in that oversold territory and then same thing happened there. But yet the one right here in 2021, the only bearish one, which gives us that 25% chance, 
would not fall within that criteria. Um, and then obviously, clearly, this one does fall, in, our fifth one, which is the mystery right now, falls in that criteria because we are heading up from being, uh, if you look at this RSI, this was the second most oversold according to this weekly history that we have gotten throughout Bitcoin's 14, 15 years uh, of, its, uh, of its trading history. Um, so overall, again, I think everything personally is looking great. I don't really think there's any reason to think that we're going to make lower lows. I mean, we could have that black swan event, some sort of a scare tactic in order for, you know, black rock or Vanguard or any of the whales, market makers, whatever you want to call them to get this final last chance to scoop up some Bitcoin at 20,000 or a few, uh, about $500 or lower than 20,000. 20, um, but here for this monthly chart, this end all be all chart that I haven't gone over in quite some time, each one of these color coordinated candles incorporates volume data or RSI data. The turquoise and pink ones are RSI data. Excuse me. And then the red and the greens and the purples or yellows, if you see those, are volume based. And these are vector candles again, just to reiterate what these are. If you're new to the content. Um, but if we take a look here, zoom in on our most recent uh, price action. What we see is, and I'm actually, I'm going to go back to that weekly chart here in a second. But what we see is, is our current, not our current candle, but our recent candle opened and closed above the black moving average. We go back each and every single time we see that the bull market ensued. We have this right here for the W of the cycle or the phase that we're still on. But that's, if we zoom in here, if I take the actual candles off real quick, we can see. Um, there it is. You can see here, oh god, I forgot I had this chart on. Right, scratch that idea. So we can see here, if we look at the white moving average we made, we had a crossover, then we just briefly crossed back below the black moving average. So if we go back to the most recent, before that phase one's double double uh, double bottom, and actually I'm going to have to take this to the weekly to show what I'm wanting to show here. So again, just to show it, we can see here we had the white moving average make a W, a double bottom, crossing below right here just for a tad bit during the March crash 2020 if we go back to again that phase one previous time that it happened so this would have been cycles two phase one that we're looking at currently we can see right here we had our first dip below it which is what we're looking at currently right here December of 2011 would line up the bottom we set in 2018 and 19 more recently and then this second we had this brief crossover which would line up with the intermediate high of June of 2019 and then we had the second crossover right here which culminated in around April 2012 that would harmonic wise in terms of the price the fractal repetition Bitcoin clearly is portraying over its history lines up with the March crash um, but I mean generally here looking at this weekly chart you can see looking at the white moving average and the black moving average every single time it crosses over that means the bull market began if we go back to the uh, the cycle of phase uh, phase two back here in 15 14 which is like i said what our harmonics are pretty much copied this time around in our bear market it only crossed back above it once didn't cross back below and once it did cross above it once the bull market was uh fully and confidently started and that's again clearly that is what we are seeing right here as well so go back to this monthly chart um what i was pointing out with the candles is the fact that they've opened and we've closed above the black moving average which i put, just got done pointing out its importance we've seen the monthly crossover of the white moving average above the black moving average and our current candle is a small bodied candle with a drastic wick towards the downside not necessarily the upside but nonetheless we have a small or only have 10 days left in this monthly candle. We have a small body candle with drastic wicks. As I've said many times, these being high Kanashi candles, when you start to see that, that is indicating that there's going to be a momentum move soon. I mean, if we go back to the March crash right here, right after March in the month of April 2020, that same thing happened again. Big wicks, drastic wicks, small body, the bull market to 64,000 began. If we go right here to March of 2022, essentially two years after that same candle that I just got done pointing out, we see the same thing happen. Drastic wicks, small body, 
that's when the brunt of the bear market ensued. If we look at this candle right here in May of 2021, again, that was almost a year after the March crash. Uh, we see a small body with very drastic wicks. Again, that's when we had this intermediary run towards the downside to around 28,000 before we went to 69,000. If we go back to this uh, phase two of cycle two, we can see right here, we had a small body, drastic wicks. And then shortly after that, we obviously we continue to go lower. We can even factor in this candle right here in August of 2015. You see relatively small body, but we see right here looking at that one, very, very drastic wicks towards the downside. Bull market began to ensue. If we look right here in May of 2014, the body's so thin you can barely see it, drastic wicks, brunt of the bear market began. And then we see the same thing right here as well. August of 2016 to September of 2016, small bodies, drastic wicks, the vast majority, the brunt of the bull market ensued after that. And that would also be, you could uh, correlate the uh, August of 2016, September of 2016 to this buildup we've been seeing recently, which like I said, is more comparable to basically September, August, September of 2020. Uh, which is just more specific and technical to seeing a, re uh, a reoccurrence of a March crash to $64,000 uh, bull market run um, overall. But the last thing that I want to point out here quickly is that the upper bound of the Pi cycle indicator, so these purple dots you see, fits at 45000 Again, so that's further validating the fact that we would likely see a move towards 40 to mid 40s or uh, 50 to mid 50s which basically zooming in again here it's a it's it's generally it's still essentially within the same area if we whether or not we see the move towards 40 to 45,000 or 50 to 55,000 we will break the upper bound of the pie cycle we will uh and then basically i mean it'll just in my opinion full on uh confirm the fact that we have been seeing a bull market build up uh, in the grand scheme of things recently. But so here with SPX, I'm, I, as I've been saying, so this pattern, this it's a 27 plus year long macro trend we've been seeing. It starts in 1994. What we are basically seeing is an ascending uh, bull market basically. It lasted obviously a very long time. What we're seeing is basically M's form over a period of time, um, as I've said, the, if you just begin to start to look and you start to intuitively see that fundamentally the price of anything, whether or not it's fiat or cryptocurrency or whatever, fundamentally moves in alternations, waves of going into an M, into a W, back into an M again. So if we, for, we form an M right here as a double top, we come down right here. And then let's say we form a W as a double bottom, then we come back up. And then it's even more clearly linked like this right here. We formed an M right here. So we just go back and we look right here. Starting from right here, we go down one, two, three. So now we have next what would be right here starting from this point. Now we formed a W, so then we would go down. So actually, according to this, W's are bearish and M's are bullish because you're going to want to buy the bottoms of the M's to carry them towards their highs. And you're going to want to sell, uh, obviously, at the tops of the M's and then rebuy back in at the bottom of the M, which is basically the beginning of the bottom range of W. I mean, it's kind of essentially the same thing, really. It's obviously, it's two sides of the same coin. I mean, if you flip a W upside down, it looks like an M. If you flip an M upside down, it looks like a W. But anyways... So we can see here, starting from 1994, we see our first macro M right here. And then if we start from 2009, um, obviously this looks nothing like an M, the second one. So starting from this six all the way to this six, like I said, it clearly looks nothing like an M, but it's it's the general fact that it's happening and basically a six wave move, even the length of them were the exact same. If we start from December of 1994 out to the high of number three, so you can see down here, 154 bars. If we start from March of 2009 out to this second M's three, it was also 154 bars. Now, as you can clearly see here, number five, so from four to five was the, uh, you could say a fake out or whatever. It was just the final testing of the upper bound of this Gaussian channel, basically $1,400. 
and then we got rejected into the 2008 uh, bleeding into 2009 market crash uh, when things went down about approximately 60%. It, uh, and if we look at our current one, so three, four to five, you can see that it's obviously lasted a little bit longer. This first one, this first three to four to five was eight bars, eight, nine bars. And then the second one is 18 to 19 bars. So it's essentially our current three to four to five is about essentially double the length of the previous three, four to five. Um, but what I find insanely interesting is, is if you clearly if we zoom in here, we can look, you can see what rejected us into this market crash was testing the upper bound of the Gaussian channel, as you can clearly see there, uh, May, May of 2008. We go to where we are currently, we are uh, just a month after May, as I've been recently pointing out. Every If you, if you start at the May's uh, after these highs, according to this, every seven years, According to that, we see that major crash. That's what another backbone of this 27 plus year long structure. We're only a month after May. Like I said, this this uh, three four to five has been a little extended time wise. So, uh, and again, we're we're testing the upper bound of this Gaussian channel. Uh, and if we go down to let's say let's go down to the weekly here. I mean, I think we are highly overextended. I mean, if we zoom out. Take a look at this RSI. We can see we are peaking our heads above the upper bound. We're not as oversold as we possibly could be, but nonetheless, we are we are above the upper bound. Uh, we've been the stock market indices have been going up in general. Or let's go let's go down to the daily. Uh, I mean, it's been going up basically sh very strongly since the uh, the end of May. So I mean, it's really only been about two three weeks at this point from there. But I mean. Going all the way back to March of this year, it's been going upwards. I mean, if we look at the RSI here on the daily, it's even more oversold, obviously, than on the weekly. It's actually specifically, according to the blue RSI line, it is just as oversold as it was going all the way back to April, the 15th of April, roughly, of 2021. Um, so, I, I mean, like, if you just look at the price, again, pairing in that RSI being highly oversold, I mean, the price, it's going to have to cool down eventually. I mean, whether or not it, we see, you know, for, like, for example, let's say we come down and we test the upper bound of the Gaussian channel, and then we bounce back up, and then we actually end up setting a new high. Uh, like I said, the last time I updated these stock indices, I don't really see the SPX specifically going any higher than maybe about 30 to 50 percent higher than its previous high, which would take us up to, I mean, talking six to basically six to seven thousand. Um, and even if that happens, I think that would likely set that high next year. And then overall, going back to the monthly here real quick, overall, whether or not, let's say we extend you know, to that six to seven thousand dollar range, pushing you know like halfway into next year. I still like overall. I still. I mean, obviously. I mean, all the stock indices. I mean, here specifically with SPX, it's been going nothing but up since two thousand nine. It's been going straight up for fourteen years. It's been going up since Bitcoin came out. Eventually, you know, with the decoupling, like this is going to have to decouple from Bitcoin eventually, and you know. You understand Bitcoin, and obviously if you have faith, uh, or rather, you know, hope and trust in the fact of what it was created for, what it's supposed to do to bring on a new economic and financial system, then these stock indices are going to have to decouple, like I, like I just got done saying, and they're going to have to die off while Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, etc. takes its place. Um, but I mean, I do think, like I said, mentioning um, how I was saying towards the end of May, we could likely start to see this drop off. Obviously, we're kind of bleeding a little bit past that. But I do think this is, again, further validating that. Um, and I do think, basically, give it another... I mean, we're basically... I mean, it's the 19th or the 20th at this point of June. I give it another, like, I would say month. And if this, if the SPX and the stock indices are still behaving strongly, if they're closing, if they've opened and they've closed above the upper bound of this Gaussian channel... Likely, we're at least going to retest the high of around 4,800, or we will continue to go higher. But I'm still, again, I'm going to stick to this 27 plus year long trend. 
I'm going to say give it another month and then I I do pretty confidently and again I could be wrong I do pretty confidently believe that this is going to see a very quick and very steep major rejection uh, down to basically two thousand dollars which would line up to retracing down to the level of the one to two back here that would be from top of the three to bottom 57 percent which is is what the three to six was previously and it could be even even be worse i mean they haven't news outlets haven't released these article re articles uh recently but all throughout last year many news outlets were and we're obviously in a recession but many news outlets were releasing articles saying that we're heading into another 2008 like crash another 2008 like recession and it could likely if not very likely be far worse and that even the the whole far worse of it gets uh, further uh, validated and instantiated as being a fact of the future with the fact that uh, the whole the decoupling and the fact that these are going to literally have to borderline stock indices that is die out in order for bitcoin and other crypt uh, blockchain cryptographic solutions to take the place of all of this stuff um so the other the last thing i wanted to point out was here is if we look at each of these so these uh, orange bubbles that i have on here if we look back at the previous 2008 crash which is uh we didn't break above the median the threshold of 53 we basically got rejected at it if we look here currently we can see that we have actually our size both the pink and the turquoise lines are broken above it and the blue line is even crossed back above the white line um and that could be a good thing that mean that could mean we're going to go higher maybe we'll make a double top or retest the higher the previous high or we will continue to make new highs here and maybe pr print some sort of a bearish divergence uh, again nonetheless i think that we're still heading into a massive 2008 light crash whether or not it continues bullishly for another like six months to a year or so um but i'm i'm personally going to rationalize this out as the fact that so our current three four to five has been double in length of the previous three four to five because of that i think that we could likely basically be seeing here we're, we're going down obviously and we're coming back up we've crossed above i think we'll cross above it briefly to kind of you know fake people out and then we'll just cross back below and head into highly oversold territory similar to again so this black line that i've drawn in here i think it would perfectly just line up with you know market makers whales elites whatever you want to call them these people that have a lot of money etc you know just trying to trick people and you know make people think oh this is going to go up but in, in, in actuality it's just faking you out it's just a psyop or whatever you want to call it um at the end of the day uh but and again, I, just to quickly say, I mean that, so this on the SPX, this applies to each, so the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ, and I'm sure it's likely on other stock um, indices as well. But this same 27 plus year long ongoing trend applies to all those other indices I mentioned as well. Um, and now that I'm, I click back on this chart, uh, even more in the more micro sense from the two to the three, we can break down this two to three bullish moving into this bull, what was a bull, and the, this is lined up like time wise perfectly. If I were to just move this up, it goes right over the price. But this even, we saw a bullish megaphone. We saw our break right here up to the three. So even in a more of a short term, or I suppose a medium term, this lasted from 2016 to 2020. That was basically four, four to five years in unfolding. But even with this, I mean, I, we're going to have to see, I feel like just more of a drastic cool off. I mean, from two to three, we went up 165%. From three to four, we only went down 27%. And then from beginning in 2009 up to three, we went up 621%. Yet, we're only down from three to four, 27%. I just don't, I mean, like I said, whether or not we continue to go higher and print a bearish divergence is also, uh, in all honesty, it is just as likely. But I, I just don't really, again, personally see that happening. But... Anyways, that was uh, pretty much all that I wanted to go over in this video. So hopefully you enjoyed. Um, hopefully you were able to take away something from all this in an educational sense, as that is what this channel is meant for. Uh, none of this is financial advice. By all means, do not listen to me. I know nothing. I have no idea what's going to happen. 
Um, and besides that point, did, why why would you listen to some random person on the internet for your financial advice? It's a terrible decision. Anyways, all that being said, everything gone over. I hope you all have a blessed day. Ooh, I, ooh, I